Welcome to the first in our new series here at the Open Library, Beyond Books and Manuals. So my name is Siri Gauthier. I'm the coordinator for the Open Library here at eCampus Ontario. I'm also joined by my colleague, Mary Gu, who will be helping moderate chat. Um, we're also joined today by Dr. Ryan Bruce and Dr. Howard Spring, who will be walking us through their OER later on today. So thank you to them for making time for us today. Uh, so we'd like to ground the session in a land acknowledgement. The offices of eCampus Ontario, located in downtown Toronto, are within, within the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. We acknowledge and we thank the diverse Indigenous people who have, whose footsteps have, currently do, and will continue to mark this territory, and we also ask that you consider the caretakers of the lands and the waters on which you are situated. I'm coming to you as a settler here on land covered by Treaty 13 and the William Treaties, um, where I have the honor to, to work and play. So feel free to share your own land acknowledgements in the chat as well. So on the agenda today are four things. Um, the first three will kind of blaze through just because this is the recorded part. Um, and also, if I'm being honest, um, I'm very excited for part four. Um, but we'll be covering what is the open library, um, what is an OER or an open education resource, um, and then ways to incorporate OER into your teaching. And I will be passing it on to Howard and Ryan for uh, Beyond the Classroom World Music from the Musician's Point of View, their very wonderful VLS funded OER. So before we really get started going, uh, we've covered the agenda, all this, I do just want to give you a bit of context on us here at eCampus Ontario. This might be a bit of a review for most of you, but who knows, maybe you are dragged here by a friend or something and you have no idea why you're here or who's talking to you. Um, so a bit of context, at eCampus, we're here to develop innovation and collaboration in Ontario's post-secondary institutions. We have a few key programs beyond the Open Library. They include the virtual learning strategy. We also support Ontario's micro-credential strategy through the micro-credential portal, the pilot program partnerships framework, and more. We've got Ontario Extend, which is a micro-credentialed professional learning pr program for educators, which I encourage you to join. They actually have a module dedicated to curating resources, um, including OERs. Uh, the winter facilitated sessions have just started, so feel free to register for those. We also have the Consortium d'Apprentissage Expérientiel Francophone de l'Ontario, or CAPFO, which is in support of Francophone Student Experiential Learning. We've got Adaptive Learning. Check out their workshops coming up soon. You can register for those. Uh, there's also the EdTech Sandbox, the Experience Design Lab, the Annual Technology and Education Showcase and Seminar, Ontario Exchange, the Intellectual Property Advanced Curriculum. There's a bunch of stuff. Um, I do invite you to visit ecampusontario.ca to explore our other digital transformation programs, platforms, and services, because that was a mouthful. I am sure that some of that kind of slipped by. We got a lot going on here at eCampus, so feel free to check out our website and find out more. So all that out of the way, let's dive into what we we're here to talk about, uh, and that's OERs. But I think it's maybe worthwhile to define what this term is. We've been throwing it around a lot, um, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, an OER is an open education resource. So a definition that gets thrown out a lot is one that was put forth by David Wiley, who is one of the big names in the Open Content Initiative. And the quote is that the terms open content and open educational resources describe any copyrightable that is either in the public domain or licensed in a manner that provides everyone with free and perpetual permission to engage in the five R activities, retain, revise, remix, reuse, and redistribute. So we actually have another workshop completely dedicated to those basics and the five R activities, as well as licensing. Um, you're welcome to check out the recording of that on our YouTube channel. We won't be really going into detail about that because, again, it's a whole other workshop. We'd be here forever, and we want to get to the meat and potatoes today. You're welcome to email us with any questions as well. Um, but just a reminder for the time being that you can remix, reuse, and redistribute materials that are OERs, that are open, so long as they are licensed appropriately. Um, that's really kind of the gist of it. Uh, so here's the thing, right? So part of the conceit of this whole series is that we're not just focusing on books and manuals. Even though we've got oodles of them in the open library, we're sitting at 1,200 plus items right now. Um, we've got lists of, uh, a list of files and media types that continues to expand. So from simulations to assessments to common cartridge courses or podcasts and textbooks or even textbooks on how to make podcasts, um, we've got all of that, and an OER is not just a book. And part of what we're here today to do is to kind of explore those different formats and those different 
types of resources and also just to, to hear from some creators. So before we really get into the big part of the session, um, there's a lot of disclaimers today. Um, I, one of the th things that I, I want to take a moment to acknowledge is that there are supports available to you. Uh, there are a handful of places to get support. This list is by no means exhaustive and it's not meant to be, um, but some of the sort of easy places to get support when you are considering either opening up part or all of your course in your teaching um, are us here at the Open Library. Uh, you can send us an email at open at ecampusontario.ca if you have any questions. You can also join the Ontario Open Library Network or OOLN Slack, which um, the, link, the link to that is being dropped in the chat right now. If you're currently associated with an institution, please check out your library and ask your librarians. They likely have a far better grasp of the specificities of your organization than we do, and we'll be able to work with you in finding resources or adapting resources or adopting them or any of these things. Um, on that note as well, please reach out to your teaching and learning center. So they likely have incredible instructional designers, learning developers, specialists in open education, or staff who are able to help you out. Um, so please check these things out. So hinging on that and the knowledge that we are all in different places, one thing to consider is this quote from the OER Starter Kit by Abby Elder, which is that open pedagogy might be a series of practices, a learning style, or a state of mind. It's not one size fits all and it's not meant to be. So uh, we all start in different places. The journeys that we have and the resources that we have available to us will depend entirely on the individual and on the circumstances of that individual. So one of the things that open pedagogy does is also kind of embrace that um, that openness, which is a, a terrible thing to keep reusing the word open constantly, but um, this is sort of the, the crux of the matter, right? So when we get started, full disclosure, uh, I'm a librarian, so I'm not here to teach you how to teach your learners, and I'm not here to tell you what content you need to include in your syllabus or any of this stuff. Think of this maybe more as a reference session, if you've attended one of those or had one of those with um, your, your local librarian. At the end of the day, I'm just here to let you know what's possible and help you on your way to finding or maybe creating an OER that works for you and your specific needs and circumstances. And the way we're going to do that is just by considering how much work you're able and willing to put in. So maybe you're looking to just kind of go whole hog and fully redo your course and incorporate open pedagogy from the get-go and really dive into open and maybe create some new resources that you will then obviously submit to the open library because why wouldn't you everyone should be submitting to the open library um but maybe you're also just kind of a little bit curious and you've heard about oers and you want to dip your toes in but you're a little bit wary um, and that's totally fine uh, it's all about balancing resources whether they be time effort funding or any number of things and as such there are sort of what some may consider trade-offs if you're looking for a sort of low involvement way to get some OERs included in your teaching, you're probably not looking at a high level of customizability. Whereas if you're looking to create something from scratch you're, uh, that you know fully in or in captures everything to do with your, or your syllabus this semester, all this stuff, um, you're likely going to need to be involved in its creation and adaptation. So obviously there are going to be exceptions to these kinds of guidelines, but it's worth at least keeping in mind. Also, please note that any of the suggestions that are coming up are not definitive, they are not prescriptive, and they are not meant to be complete or seen as complete. We have, again, over 1,200 items in the open library, and there are other repositories that also house OERs. So if I was here telling you every single item in the open library, it would probably sound like me reading from a phone book, and I don't think that'd be particularly engaging, although maybe I'm wrong, who knows, but I suspect that's not what you're here for. If you do want more specialized help, please refer back to that who to contact for help page or feel free to pop into our OER reference sessions every last Friday at 12. Um, but this is at least a, a place to get you started. So uh, we're gonna get started with keeping things straightforward. The process for adopting an OER, which is to say making parts of your course open, um, might not be entirely different to what you've already, you're already used to when selecting traditionally published materials for your courses. If you want to adopt an OER with very little in the way of customization, you've got some options. Um, you can make just parts of your course open, and some of those parts might be tests. We've got some items with ancillary materials like test banks or instructor guides. It might be workshops or lecture materials or maybe even assignments or assessments. You can take those same OERs and then later go on and do things with them or adopt them or adapt them in some different way. But maybe you just want something that's, you know, kind of easy plug and play. Um, 
So a handful of suggestions, again, not meant to be exclusive. We're just kind of broadly touching on what's available in the open library. Um, I invite you to check it out. Uh, or even again, drop into one of our reference sessions if you're, you know, you've got something in mind and you're not sure how to find it. Um, come in on Friday and I'll, I will be very happy to help you with that. But let's say you are teaching an intro to English literature course. Maybe you want to check out the public domain core collection, which is a series of public domain books like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein that have been beautifully adapted to EPUBs and press books by the folks over at TMU. If you are, let's say, teaching Shakespearean drama this semester and you have access to some VR headsets kicking around, it might be worth checking out the Hamlet VR experience or any number of the other VR items in our collection. But maybe you're teaching composition and you still want your students to have a printed book that they can mark up or work with. So maybe something like composition and literature, a handbook and anthology is for you. Um, this book is actually print on demand compatible and many of the OERs we have are POD compatible or print on demand. We do have a partnership with the University of Waterloo to provide at cost printing of suitable OERs. And by suitable, I literally just mean format. Um, we are not quite at the point where we can print a VR experience. I'm sure we're working on it, but we haven't quite reached it yet. Um, but many of our OERs are of a suitable format to be printed. Um, or maybe you're teaching storytelling in whatever course and you want to get a set of workshops and experiences, something like revision story making might be for you. So there are many options that you can kind of just adapt or sorry, that you can adopt into your teaching right away. So maybe you've done all these things, you're already an old hat at adopting and you want to try adapting an OER. So at this point, you would be reworking existing OER. So this might mean taking one of those items that you saw in a previous slide and maybe porting over that copy of Frankenstein into your own Pressbook account, enabling hypothesis and making an assignment wherein your students work together to mark it up into stage directions or something, or adapting any of the items that are there. Um, a few things to consider before you start in on adapting, though, uh, and the first and the biggest one, and if I could make this in size 140 font, I would, um, please check licenses. We have another whole webinar, again, that touches on the basics of Creative Commons licenses, so I don't want to get too far into it. But in this instance, um, if you're looking to adapt an OER or even create something new that's inspired by another one, please make sure that certain items are there, that the license allows for it. Um, certain items must be used as is. If it says no derivatives, that means that you can't make a derivative from it. So if it's uh, ND is anywhere in the license, you're probably not going to be able to make a derivative. That's the whole point of the license. That being said, if the license allows it, then please feel free to localize it, translate it, update it. Maybe you want to adapt it for the Canadian context or the Franco-Italian context and translate it into French. Um, you might want to remix and combine different OERs to make the perfect super mega OER. Uh, you can rework open assignments from your own syllabus with the content that you're teaching for the semester, um, any number of things. So a few examples, again, um, broadly speaking, this can be adapted into any course. So something like arrival activities. Um, increasing student connection and engagement at the start of classes. You can draw inspiration and make your own and ensure that your students are engaged from the get-go. Maybe you're teaching an art history course. Uh, Candid Art Histories has a license that allows you to adapt the assignments that are provided. You can add in your own graphics or even maybe get your students to collaborate with the creation of graphics. Um, you can also use only bits and pieces of the resource. The beautiful thing about OERs is that you can tailor them to what you and your learners need. Um, I have it on the next slide, but I think it's worth mentioning here. You can and maybe might want to engage your learners in this process. It's a great way to help them take ownership of their learning and be engaged with the material in a different way than what they might have experienced before. Um, engaging students as authors and co-authors is one of the sort of great benefits to open education and to OERs. All that's it. Oh, I'm sorry, all that said, uh, maybe you do have the bandwidth to make an OER from scratch. You're sitting here and you're like, no, I want inspiration and I have it and I know exactly what I want. Um, if you do, incredible. Uh, we're excited to hear that. Um, feel free to publish your own OER. So you can do that through the Open Library's publishing infrastructure. We have H5P and Pressbooks. Again, um, previous workshops, we have a backlog of these things. Uh, feel free to check out information on Pressbooks and H5P Studio. You can also, again, engage your students as co-authors and maybe 
have them create new assignments that will work to that will continue to work for you and your classes and your teaching and that you can share with others um, no more sort of one and done the assignment gets done and then you recycle the paper um, something to be said for that you can also go ahead and create new experiences new items new resources whatever you want and then when you're done you can submit them to the open library so that someone else can go ahead and adopt or adopt adapt it depending on the license that you select. It's just a nice little cycle. So in this test case, if you want to create an OER, again, you can create an account for Pressbooks or H5P member institutions. Um, if you are part of a member institution, rather, you are welcome to make an account with your institutional email. It is completely free. You can also chat with your teaching and learning center. Again, they likely have experts. Um, and finally, you can check out eCamp Campus Ontario's Digital Accessibility Toolkit and see uh, a, a few resources there in the toolkit to make sure that your digital resource is accessible and AODA compliant. So I know you're all eager to hear from the team of OER creators that we've got here today. I know I am. Um, just a few reminders before we kind of pass things off and stop the recording. Um, just a reminder, we here at the Open Library are here for you. We provide training, advocacy materials, community, and analytics on OER adoptions in Ontario and also um, around the world. We've got folks using items in our collection that are not from Ontario, which is pretty awesome. Um, feel free to send us an email at open at ecampusontario.ca or come to the reference sessions, which are drop-in every last Friday of the month at noon in both English and French. So it's at this point, uh, I'm going to have this here for posterity. Um, for the folks who are watching the recording, we're going to stop recording in a moment. The resource that's coming up, World Music from the Musician's Point of View, is under an Ontario Commons no derivative license, and there are some contracts to navigate um, with some musicians, so we've opted not to record this showcase. If you are an Ontario educator or learner looking at the recording, you can access World Music from the Musician's Point of View through the Open Library. Just make an account with your institutional email and get started.